Hello. Hi. <laughs> Welcome again. Good afternoon, Hi. everybody, or good morning, or good evening, in the case of Liz. <laughs> So, welcome everyone, uh, welcome again. And uh, so today the word we will capture in our doodles is proportion. But before we start, let us introduce our guests that we have today. Uh, we happily welcome again Liz from Australia. Hi Liz. Hi. <laughs> and from Milan, we have Alice. Francesca, <laughs> Francesca, and Barbara. Hi. Hello. Hi. Thank you for being with us today. Hello, hello, everyone. <laughs> so um, our guests will get prepared as Karen uh, shares the instructions of our little activity with you. For those who are here for the first time, um, or for all the others, it's a small um, memory. The rules we follow, they are very simple. Take a sheet of paper and a pen you feel like drawing with today, and then simply get comfortable. Listen to our story and let your mind and hand wander on your paper. Get lost. Draw whatever comes to your mind. And we ask you to not seek for perfection because the definition of doodle means to scribble, to sketch, to make designs on paper. And this while you think of something completely different. Probably you also do that when you are on your phone talking to someone. Doodles, they can be literal or abstract. Sometimes we think it's even more interesting when they are abstract and just consist of forms, of movements, patterns, because they hold hidden connotations, meanings, emotions, and that they have the power to start very interesting conversations afterwards. Well, the most important thing for you to do today is just to let go. There are no possible mistakes. Anyway, sometimes a mistake in proportion can lead to a very interesting result. So, our guests, they are now back. We are ready to start drawing. Uh, maybe for those who draw at home, um, it's better to not look what our guests are doing at this very moment. Just turn your computer a little bit to the side and just listen to what we are telling. Let your hands be guided into our word for the day. Proportion. So here we go with some definitions. Hmm. Proportion seems to be quite a complex word. Number one, a balanced, pleasing, or suitable arrangement of parts. Number two, something belonging to, due to, or contributed by an individual member of a group. Three, the relationship in quantity, amount, or size between two or more things. Four, the total amount of measurable space or surface occupied by something. But after all, it all breaks down to these three aspects, size, relation, and measure. That was a lot of definitions. Um, proportion is quite a complex word, I see. But now let's go uh, to a very simple story, to one of my favorite childhood books. It's called Chim Knopf in German. In Italian, this would be Chimibotone, I guess, and maybe in English, Chimibutton. 
Well, Jim is always together with his two good friends. One is Emma, a steam locomotive, and the other one is Lucas, the engine driver. In one of their fantastic adventures, they meet someone who is an apparent giant. Well, when you see an apparent giant or a, a sham giant, he's called Mr. Turtur, he appears to be huge, but I mean, incredibly huge when seen from a distance. So people fear him a lot. But once you approach Mr. Turtur, you get closer and closer to him, he becomes smaller and smaller. Jim Knopf, as he experiences the world with new eyes and is very curious, and he's not very aware of the rules of proportion and fearlessly walks towards the giant, with every step, Mr. Turtur shrinks a little. Michael Ende, who wrote this wondrous book, created a very peculiar moment of tension I always delightfully feared simply by mixing the rules of proportion. Feels like we are entering games of perspective and optical illusions. You were talking about mixing up the rules of proportions. In this case, I guess we could call this in mathematics an inversely proportional phenomenon. What about other rules? I'm particularly interested in how finding the right proportions can bring a sense of harmony. There is a graphic exercise by the Italian designer Giovanni Anceschi called Anti Prima Donna that consists of choosing two patterns and five colors and arranging them along a strip, changing the width of each part in order to create something balanced. The goal is that your eyes don't focus on one color or one pattern in particular, but that they shift from one part to another because all the parts have the same visual weight. It's hard to really measure the results because we're dealing with patterns and colors and definitely a matter of perception. It's difficult to measure this mathematically. Yeah, I guess it's a little bit like being in the kitchen. Anyone had that with the appropriate use of salt, isn't it? Not too much, not too little. Simply the perfect amount. In a perfect proportion to all the other ingredients in the iron pot. Yes, exactly. It's about finding balance and harmony. I wonder if we could speak of proportions when dealing with our other senses. For example, when you touch or massage someone, one has to be responsive to the body of the other and understand how to use the right proportions of pressure versus movements. And in music as well, we can find proportions between different sounds and, and rhythms. Everything is a matter of proportions. And of course, there are many artists playing virtuously with proportions. Always when I think of putting something into the right perspective and getting the proportions right, I think of Le Corbusier's Modulor, a human silhouette as a measurement unit, actually, uh, created by Le Corbusier to underline that his architectures and his designs seek closeness to human beings and that, are the, that it is humans who are at the center of his work. Yes, and this system of proportions of his uses the golden ratio or the divine proportions. When in doubt, you can always count on these proportions to lead your way. The divine proportion suggests that there's a mathematical equation that's consistent with the aesthetics of good composition. 
It has even been proven that some people with a natural instinct for good composition employ certain properties consistent with the golden ratio of one object to another as defined by the number of 1.618, etc. It has been suggested that Leonardo made deliberate use of the divine proportion in almost every aspect of his work, including his paintings like the Mona Lisa or the Last Supper. Throughout history, it has been speculated that the golden ratio is prevalent in every aspect of our universe. From the natural growth pattern of the Nautilus seashell to the pyramids of Egypt, all the way to the musical compositions of Mozart and Beethoven. But coming back to architecture, Mies van der Rohe once said, the problem of architecture has always been the same throughout time. Its authentic quality is reached through its proportions and the proportions cost nothing. In fact, most of them are proportions among things, not the things themselves. Art is almost always a question of proportions. Ah, the research for perfect harmony. But it's also interesting when things get out of proportion. What do you think, Anne-Sophie? I agree. But what does that mean exactly? Because when things are blown out of proportion, here again, I think it's a very subjective matter because what is blown out of proportion to you might not be to me. Is it when someone exaggerates or someone is being overly emotional, for example? And according to who? Inflation, distortion, warping, saturation, excess, fantasy, extravagance, overstatement. It's always a relation between two parts or two perceptions or two opinions. And now we are, of course, very curious to see what all this talk about proportion produced on our artists' papers. <laughs> Still the final touches. Wow. <laughs> so May we ask you to turn around again so that we can see you and your work. <laughs> Maybe we can start with Alice. Let's... Oh, there we go. Uh, somehow we don't hear. Wow. Uh, oh, we can't hear you, Alice. I made this uh. kind of. Oh, let's see if. Okay, now I think you were able yeah, to see. Better. Yeah, we see I everything. A, I imagined uh, a bird encountering like the the super larger version of it himself mm. and uh, having a conversation with him mm -hmm. so the proportion and the fact of like it's double is huge and something must have been gone wrong <laughs> when <laughs> so I don't wow, know. That... that's very nice like... Super nice. Thank Thanks you. a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Barbara. Uh, allora, um, I started the beginning like proportion. I saw I had the idea of uh, someone uh, not really perfect <laughs> with different <laughs> lenses. And so after that, uh, 
I I realize like a hand because uh, where I where I work during the weekend is a place where people work with uh, iron and so the old man has uh, different fingers because they cut during um, life with uh, working with iron and so the idea of having not the uh, not really proposed um, uh, fingers means uh, uh, something that happens in your life so it's like uh, a map of your life mm. this idea and then um, <laughs> then i was like a, a small man that can uh, uh, like uh, with uh, with the, his mm. uh, like the idea of uh, the proportion that uh, also if you are very small but, but you are smart you can uh, move something very very big that is not proportion to your uh, to your figure so as a big stone and you very small so you have to be smart <laughs> then <I've>, uh, <laughs> then after the idea of proportion was like a, a glass uh, like uh, sometimes you say it's half full or half uh, mm -hmm. empty, empty or like one so the idea of having a different point of views and then i start like uh, with a, a kind of a proportion with having a uh, equilibrium mm -hmm. and so ah. Thinking of like an idea of Calder, like so, mm -hmm. uh, so I started having like uh, 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 try to create uh, different proportions with elements, creating an equilibrium. Mm -hmm. So this is was like a shape, and then I realized other uh, two shapes with uh, uh, aspetta così like this, uh, and so maybe one small element here, and uh, maybe this like this uh, but having also this so different proportion by elements uh, to create equilibrium and a shape uh, uh, to realize like always sorry <laughs> thinking about the sculpture <laughs> yeah <Very nice. laughs> super interesting but, also the mm -hmm. the your explanations it's very nice that notion of creating a balance through using the right proportions uh, and yes. uh, also in a physical space with a physical sculpture. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot, Barbara. Thank you to you. <laughs> Francesca. Hi. Hi, Hi everyone. Uh, here is my uh, draw. Um, and yeah, I started from uh, the uh, portion from these uh, little balls actually, and I I really uh, enjoyed the fact that um, the, the the proportion change uh, in uh, in the in contrast with the other shapes. So I started from these uh, like uh, box at the at the top. And then I started to uh, distort the, the proportion, adding these that are should be like uh, uh, trees, like base of, of the of the trees. Mm. And then I I decided to to play with the with the trees and a big uh, a big uh, uh, leaf on uh, on the tree. And then I decided also to distort again the proportion, adding uh, like a. Uh, uh, of a human body, so like uh, uh, could be like a fairy tale or something like that, <laughs> uh, like a the forest, uh, forest fairy. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed that uh, it, the the proportion change uh, while you are like creating, uh, you are adding uh, details and uh, what at the beginning was big than small and uh, vice versa you know mm. so i i try to uh to let me guide by by this <laughs> mm. so moving between scales very nice very nice Thanks a lot. Yeah, yeah, actually. A whole, a whole story hiding um, 
in your in a few red strokes it's so beautiful to see that thanks a lot francesca mm -hmm. and we have liz who is left <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can't hear you. Okay, now we will. I started yep. off with an ant and I decided to look <laughs> at how the ant sees things and in what proportion the ant sees things. And so this is what I finished up with. The ant is down there, if you can see in the bottom <laughs> corner. <laughs> and looking up at this person. Um, yeah, and so the proportion changes based on where the ant is and what the person's doing. Mm -hmm. And so the triangles have changed in proportion as well in the background. And perspective, very nice. And Beautiful. so colorful, it always mm -hmm. uh, gives me like this air of freshness and energy i can use this very good at the moment <laughs> thank you so oh, much thank you. <laughs> thank you so much to all of you for very beautiful drawings today um, yes thank you and um we hope you'll join us again we have two more um two or three two two more um episodes and the next one will be in two weeks so we're skipping a week uh so we hope you're going to join us also next next time <laughs> and thank you again for everyone so for those who are listening and for our guests thank you so much thank you to you and take care thank you thanks a lot you, yes also you have, have a nice, nice weekend, weekend. Okay. ciao Bye to you all. Bye. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Bye. Ciao, ciao. ciao.